Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation EVGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be featuring a team that finished in the top 50 of the October rank season. It's a team that has a lot of fun tricks up its sleeve, including Focus Sash, Icy Wind, and Trick Room Fluttermane, Rocky Helmet Torkoal, Ogre Pond Cornerstone with three offensive attacks in Power Whip, Ivy Cudgel, and Stomping Tantrum, as well as a plus defense booster energy Brute Bonnet. This team does so much damage and can quickly overwhelm your opponents while also has a lot of surprises up its sleeve, so I'm really excited to feature it, and to feature Rock Ogre Pond in particular because that's not a Pokemon I've used so far in this format. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below, and thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel, it really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's just dive into things. Breaking things down, as always, Rental, Pace, and Team Creator are linked down in the description below, and as I mentioned, this team finished in the top 50 at the end of the October rank season. The Team Creator, a Japanese player, also posted a team report in Japanese, so I'll link that down in the description below. In question of the day, with us using Cornerstone Ogre Pond, I want to know what your general thoughts on all the Ogre Pond forms are, either casually or competitively, down in the comment section below. Now, I was drawn to this team immediately because of Cornerstone Ogre Pond. We've actually seen this Pokemon pop up a little bit in Regulation E, but it's often on Trick Room oriented compositions because the combination of Follow Me plus 30 is really nice. This Ogre Pond set is just designed to deal massive amounts of damage. It is Jolly, Max Attack EVs, Max Speed EVs, and you have Ivy Cudgel, Power Whip, Stomping Tantrum, and Spiky Shield. The idea is that you have pretty unique coverage between Rock, Grass, as well as Ground, and what's really nice is a lot of your opponents will defensively Terra to handle Fire-type attacks from Chiyu and Torkoal, so for example, tearing into something like Water, and then Ogre Pond can just threaten those Pokemon with the super effective Power Whip. Sturdy is also just really nice, having a built-in Focus Ash I think is always awesome, and at the end of the day, this Pokemon just does a lot more damage than I think people anticipate, myself included. You think about Pokemon in the format that exists right now, right? You have Power Whip to cover for something like Urshifu, you have Stomping Tantrum to cover for something like Heatran, as well as Iron Hands and Hisu and Arcanine, and with base 110 speed and Jolly, you're outpacing a good amount of the format. You also have Rock Ivy Cudgel, which is really nice into flying types like Tornadus and Thunderous, for example. So, overall, it's just a really consistent damage dealer, like cover for a lot of defensive types that can give the rest of the team trouble. Brute Bonnet was the second Pokemon that really drew my attention as someone who loved using Brute Bonnet in early Scarlet and Violet VGC. This set is really intriguing because it's a booster energy set with defense booster. The idea is that we currently are in a format where there are still so many physical attackers, right? You've got things like Landorus and Champau and Iron Hands and Urshifu, so being able to get an immediate defense boost to take attacks from those Pokemon is really nice. What's cool about this set is that you have a good mix of defense and offense. You've got Spore and Rage Powder, which are obviously really disruptive, but you've also got Bullet Seed and Sucker Punch. And that's one of the main reasons to use Brute Bonnet over Amoongus, right? You are able to actually deal meaningful damage with Bullet Seed and Sucker Punch, and you're able to get a free defense boost along the way. The Dark Typing is also pretty nice because Taunt Tornadus is fairly common, and so being able to be immune to Prankster Taunt before you Terra when you're Dark Typing is super sweet and allows you to get Spores off a little bit easier. Fire Terra is just an incredible Terra on this set in particular and covers for a lot of types that otherwise give Brute Bonnet trouble, especially Fairy type attacks, for example. So, Ogre Pond and Brute Bonnet, I think, really interesting on this team, but you also have some unique sets on most of the other Pokemon. For example, Fluttermane's really common everywhere right now, but this is a Grass Terra set with Icy Wind and Trick Room, and you're actually max speed and special attack. I think the idea is, when you look at Fluttermane on this team, a lot of people don't even expect Trick Room, but what this means is you can lead something like Fluttermane, Brute Bonnet, and just set up Trick Room immediately, bring out Torkoal, and Torkoal under Trick Room is just an absolute beast. This Torkoal is also interesting because it's Rocky Helmet instead of something like Charcoal or Choice Specs, so your Fire-type attacks will do a little bit less damage, but Rocky Helmet is really nice, especially against Urshifu, which continues to be one of the most common Pokemon in the format, and obviously helps against all the other physical attackers that exist out there as well. It's an item that very few people expect on Torkoal, and you can really catch opposing teams off guard with this, and it has just such a nice matchup into Water Urshifu in particular. So... Torkoal is nice on this team because not only is it good under Trick Room, but it also enables speed protosynthesis on Fluttermane. It also can support the Chi Yu in boosting your fire type attacks. For example, I had one game where Life Orb Overheat in the Sun got a one hit knockout onto Water Urshifu, which is wild to think about, right? So Torkoal enables a lot of its other teammates and uh, can also enable the protosynthesis on Brute Bonnet if your booster energy is, uh, has been consumed, for example. So, really cool Pokemon that opens up a lot of different lines of play with this team. The final two are Chi Yu and Champau. 
This Chiyu set is pretty standard. It's kind of a return to the basics where it's using Life Orb. I've seen Focus Ash Chiyu pop up a lot in this format in particular, but Life Orb is just so strong. And Ghost Terra combined with Flutter Main means you can lead Flutter Chiyu, Ghost Terra to get around Fake Outs on turn 1 and just nuke a lot of things, especially Fake Out users like Rillaboom or Iron Hands, for example. So pretty standard, but the main thing to note is that you do have Overheat on this set, and Overheat plus the Torkoal is just so much damage. The last Pokemon to talk about on this team is Chiam Pao. I actually have rarely brought Chiam Pao in my experience using this team, but it can be very helpful for specific matchups. Haze, of course, is a nice move, especially into things like Dondozo compositions. And I think the main difficult thing about bringing this Chiam Pao is that you don't have Crunch or Sacred Sword. So your best means of offense is going to be Ice Cold Crash, but the Chiam Pao is also relatively frail. So unless I feel like I can get guaranteed damage off with it, I'm a little bit wary of bringing it. That being said, of course, if you bring it, it also gives you sort of rune, which Ogre Pond can take advantage of, and that can be quite nice because sometimes that takes things that aren't a one-hit KO into one-hit KOs from Ogre Pond. So generally, this team is basically just about overwhelming your opponent with offense quickly. Uh, Fluttermane Chiyu as a lead with Torkoal in the back and Ogre Pond as a fourth, for example, was really strong, where with this lead, especially against fake out users, you can just go for Ghost Terra and then just start nuking with offense immediately. If you want to angle to set up Trick Room, I think Brute Bonnet plus Fluttermane is a really effective lead, where Bonnet gets a defense boost, Fluttermane has the Focus Sash, so it's actually quite difficult to get a knockout onto either of these, and maybe you can get a KO onto one, but not both. And then so, Fluttermane can set up Trick Room, Torkoal comes out, and then just does massive amounts of damage under Trick Room. The thing that you have to keep in mind is that most of the Pokemon on this team are actually fast, right? Chiyu, Ogre Pond, Fluttermane, and Champau are all max speed, so if you set up Trick Room, you gotta make sure that your Torkoal and your Brute Bonnet can actually take make use of it. And the Brute Bonnet here actually has some speed investment as well, as you can see, right? Uh, part of the idea here is with 90 speed, uh, after like two icy wins, you'll be able to outpace a fair amount of Pokemon in the format. And even after one icy win, you can outpace kind of the middle tier speed Pokemon. But uh, Trick Room is certainly a viable approach, you just have to make sure that you don't get caught with a lot of fast Pokemon once you've set up your Trick Room. Room. And I think you can also consider things like Torkoal plus Fluttermane if you want to get a speed boost on the Flutter immediately to help out against things like Choice Scarf Landorus, for example, or Choice Scarf Urshifu. You can just Icy Wind or Moonblast those, for example. Champau Ogre Pond is a lead where you just get the uh, sort of rune defense drop and pressure with a lot of immediate offense as well. So a lot of different ways to approach the team, but I think I generally think about leading Flutter a lot of the times. Flutter Chiyu in particular, Flutter Bonnet as well. Torkoal I don't like leading as much. I like having in the back, but I think like Chiyu Torkoal, for example, is interesting if you think your opponent just doesn't have many good answers into fire type attackers right from the get-go. In terms of tearing, by the way, it's interesting. I actually very rarely Terra the Ogre Pond. I found that I Terra Brute Bonnet a lot because this defensively is just so strong in the format right now, and I Terra Chiyu a lot just to make sure it can survive a super effective hit, for example. Uh, weirdly enough, in a lot of the practice games I played, never really Terra Ogre Pond, Flutter, or Torkoal, so these are the two that I'd look towards tearing, but of course you should play flexibly when using this team. So that's it for a quick breakdown, now let's hide some weaknesses. In terms of weaknesses, I think one of the first things that it's given me trouble is just Pokemon that are immune to fire type attacks, and specifically Heatran. This team loves using spread fire type attackers in Chiyu and Torkoal, so Heatran being able to come in, soak up those fire type attacks is kind of annoying, especially because once Heatran Terra's as well, you can't hit it for super effective with Earth Power from Torkoal or Chiyu. So a well-positioned Heatran I think can give this team a lot of trouble. I think if you look at the team as well, you don't have anything that actually takes ground type damage super well outside of Brute Bonnet, so ground type attackers can be scary. I've, I think, played against a couple of Scarf Landruses, where Landers gets into this position where it can just deal massive amounts of damage, and if Brute Bonnet commits that Fire Terra, which I often end up doing, then the team becomes even weaker to ground, for example. So that's one thing to watch out for. I think I've also lost games where I basically either get denied Trick Room when I was expecting to get it up safely, or I spend a lot of resources to try to set it up and I'm not able to successfully get it going. For example, the Flutter main here does not have Protect, right? And so if your opponent leads like two spread attackers, that can be pretty scary because it doesn't care for Rage Powder from Brute Bonnet. I had one match where my opponent had Tornadus Golden Go, and I was really worried about clicking Trick Room on turn one, so I decided, okay, I'm going to predict like Golden Go goes for a Dragon Terra, and then go for Moonblast and Sucker Punch onto it. It went for Steel Terra, I ate up a Make It Rain, and I didn't tr uh, Trick Room, and then once Flutter Mame got brought down to Sash, it was really rough, because I couldn't pressure with Trick Room the subsequent turn, because I was just going to get knocked out, for example. So, uh, Sash is really important on this Flutter Mane, so playing well with it, I think, is quite a big deal as well. And then ultimately, I think a lot of Pokemon just have certain Pokemon that can completely wall them, right? Like Brute Bonnet, if you're going up against a Grass Pokemon or a Grass Terra, that can be really challenging. Chiyu and Torkoal going up against Heatran, as I mentioned earlier, can be challenging. Uh, Ogre Palm really doesn't love going up against Intimidate in general, and one of its weaknesses is also just you might miss Power Whip, which doesn't feel really good. And... Uh, there are a lot of good defensive switch-ins into the attacks that you'll be using, so this is really strong, but uh, 
sometimes it can feel really useless if your opponent just makes one good defensive pivot so keep that in mind as well and then i think champal on this team is really volatile because you don't have focus sash and you're still super frail so let's say you try sucker punching on a big turn it fails and your opponent just knocks you out in return that doesn't feel like a very good trade so yeah those are a couple of things that i ran into i also played against a water ogre pond that didn't terra and it was outspeeding Shiyu, I wasn't able to really pressure it for a one-hit knockout, it didn't really care about Brubonnet because Brubonnet is grass typing and so the Rage Powders were irrelevant for example uh, against, or sorry, uh, Ogre Pond is grass typing and so the Rage Powders were irrelevant against it and it was able to just like quickly knock out what was next to Brubonnet which is pretty bad. Uh, and then one last thing to note is sometimes leading Brubonnet improperly can put you in really st sticky situations where it's like okay I can't really spore my opponent's side of the field but I basically feel forced to switch. There aren't that many good defensive switch-ins on this team because you rely so heavily on heavy offense and so keep that in mind as well like that's why i think leading with the team is extra important because if you don't have a good lead you don't have that many free things to switch into afterwards but yeah that's it for a quick breakdown let's get into the games Okay, the classic Iron Hands, Amoongus, Rory Moon, Landers, Heatran, and Flutter. It's actually wild to me how prevalent this team is. Uh, Paul Chua used it to get second at the Toronto Regional Championships, but... Yeah, it's really everywhere right now. So... Hmm. I kind of default towards Flutter Chiyu. It's like Fire Terra Bond is actually really interesting to be able to put things to sleep, but Flutter Chiyu, Torkoal, and Ogre Pond is how I'm thinking about this. Yeah, I mainly feel compelled to bring Ogre Pond here uh, because of Stomping Tantrum into Heatran. Versions of this team do actually often carry Shuka Berry on Heatran, so that's one other thing to think about. But I don't think Heatran is the easiest Pokemon for this team to fight against, especially because Champau doesn't have Sacred Sword. So, like, the theory behind Flutter Chiyu is that you just have Shadow Ball plus Dark Pulse pressure, and the theory behind Ogre Pond is that you uh, can Stomping Tantrum it. And if they go for like a Fairy Terra, well, you still do meaningful damage with things like Ivy Cudgel and Power Whip as well. I don't know, Champau can work in these matchups, but I just like don't love it personally. Because uh, it often feels forced to Terra just to be able to survive. That was really close on timer for my opponent. But yeah, I, I generally like Flutter Chiyu, but I think we just used Flutter Chiyu earlier on today and you saw how... Even though it can look really good as a lead, all it takes is a good defensive Terra from Iron Hands to get around it. I could even go for something crazy like Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse on Hands, turn 1. Maybe Landorus in Hands. Okay. Uh, often in this position, the Landorus is going to be Choice Scarfed. And so, that's something we got to respect. It makes sense to say you turn out here and then go out into Heatran. You could just Stomping Tantrum this slot. You could just Stomping Tantrum Flutter. What would I do if I were my opponent's shoes here? I would not fake out with hands. I do want to aggressively target down the lander slots. I'm actually down to Shadow Ball it. This seems kind of crazy, but I'm thinking about just Dark Pulsing it. They go for a Terra. Terra hands make sense. So you survived the turn. Yep. Now I'm hoping that Landorus... I mean, they could just Stomping Tantrum Chiyu, which I guess is my main concern right now. Perfect. This is exactly what I was hoping for. I think you you turn out and you go into Heatran is what I was predicting. And getting a lot of damage on a Heatran this early on, I think, is a huge deal for us. And I think they were predicting Chiyu to protect. Okay, perfect. Yes, this is what I was looking for. Good. We might just get the knockout with this play, honestly. Oh, we definitely are. Sweet. It's a risky play to make, though, right? It's like Scarf Landorus. It could just Stomping Tantrum into Chiyu. But I think if you're my opponent, you predict Chiyu to either protect or go for Ghost Terra there. And so you don't expect Stomping Tantrum to get the knockout. They wild charge. So we trade, but I'll take it. 
Hmm. I do wish I brought uh, Brute Bonnet now. It would have been incredible for this spot, I think. Personally, thinking about going out into Torkoal here. Could also just be Ogre Pond, though. The problem with Ogre Pond is I think if you're my opponent, you go back out into Landorus. And it's the Intimidate that scares me a little bit. You know what? I actually don't mind Torkoal here. Yep, it is Landorus. Cool. Man, this is actually a really big turn. What I would like to do is Heat Wave here and protect with Chiyu. What do we think their last one is is also a question. It's Fluttermane, Roaring Moon, or a Moongus. Like, basically I'm debating maybe I should just Terra Chiyu here, honestly, this turn. And double Heat Wave. You know what? I think I'm down for that. It's just so much damage here, and if I knock out- if Landorus stays in and clicks Stomping Tantrum and I get a knockout onto that, then Ogre Pond just beats the Iron Hands, because I just clicked Power Whip into that slot. So that's the theory behind this turn, knowing like you're- you should be Assault Vest Iron Hands. Okay, they just go for Rock Slide, that's fine as long as we don't flinch. Ah. Uh! Okay. It's still okay if Torkoal doesn't flinch. Yup, Rocky Helmet. <sighs> oh. <laughs> Pain. Suffering. It's fine. I think it's still winnable. Uh, I'm not going to give up. I am going to click Heat Wave again here, and I'm going to protect. Which you. That sucks, though. Uh, given, Especially given that they clicked Rock Slide, I think that play may have just won us the game. Hard to say without knowing their last one. I think Flutter could still beat me in the end game, but... Yeah. Okay. They wild charge into that slot. Uh, Torkoal not fainting there is actually quite bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, I needed Torkoal to either faint there or... Hmm. That being said, if we think their last one is a- so basically, my argument here is do I go for a double protect with Chiyu or do I just take the rock slide and overheat this, right? Uh, like I can protect Torkoal right now. I actually expect Life Orb, Heat Wave, and Sun to get the KO here. Yeah, okay, I'll protect Heat Wave. Ah, oh, three flinches in a row though, that's why Scarf Landers with rock slide is just so darn good. Let's see if they make it 4 for 4 and flinches. We should survive this. Yep. Okay, at least we finally connect here. Yep, and that gets the knockout. But imagine if we just didn't flinch initially. We would have just gotten that knockout. Would not have taken all this extra damage across the board. So, I think it's still winnable if their last Pokemon is a Moongus. Because it'll be Ogre Pond plus Torkoal into a Moongus plus Iron Hands, but... I think if it's Fluttermane, we probably lose. Show me Amoongus though, that makes me so happy. <gasps> it is Amoongus! Okay, it's still winnable. It's still winnable. Oh, okay. I need to hit Power Whip right now though. The other question is, do I even- do I contemplate going for a double protect? With Torkoal? It's also- are you min speed Amoongus by any chance? I might just attack here, because we're not min speed Torkoal. I'm gonna Heat Wave and just Power Whip. Okay, Power Whip hits. Nice, nice, nice. 
Good job, Ogre Pond. This is why I wanted to prioritize Ogre Pond so much and why I went for that play on turn one. Is there any chance we're just faster? We're not. Okay. If you're not min speed Amoongus. I mean, Pollen Puff does meaningful damage to us. I don't know the item on the Amoongus either, so this is going to be a doozy of an endgame. But at least we got it this close, given all those flinches. Like, just one less flinch, and I think we're in such good shape. One thing to consider is self-stomping Tantrum to increase the power of this. On turns that we think Amoongus like, goes for something like a Rage Powder. But for now, just go for Ivy Cudgel because we have an increased crit chance as well. But yeah, okay. So if they keep going for Protect, I'm going to side Stomping Tantrum. I didn't want to go for it immediately here. Man, this is going to be a crazy endgame finish. Wow. I, like, I also could have gone for a double protect with Torkoal, but I was thinking maybe it's worth just seeing if we're faster. Yeah. Let's see how much this does. That's really good damage. Okay. Uh, are you Citrus Berry? Also, do they go for another Protect again? I'm really thinking about the side stomping. I just don't see why you would need to Protect, quite frankly. Yeah. And it would be such a throw to go for side stomping there. Okay, even if you're Citrus, we KO. We just need to not get crit here. Woo! What a game! This was crazy! Despite getting flinched three times in a row, we pull it off. Ogre Pond, let's go. Wow. Oh my goodness. That was quite the game. But that's why you don't give up, right? It's like, I figured it, it would make sense that Amoongus was their last one because of their hesitancy to bring it out earlier on when I had Torkoal and Chiyu out on the field. But yeah, the main question is how would I play this game differently? I don't think I really would have changed too much. Yeah. The one thing to consider was like conserving our Terra, but I think Terra and Chiyu there is definitely correct because we had actually really pinned our opponent into a tough spot. And if they just don't get that first flinch onto Chiyu and Heatwave connects onto Landers, I think the game's just over right away. So the fact that they got so many consecutive flinches made it a lot harder, but yeah, you know, that's what can happen in Pokemon where it's like if your opponent just doesn't bring the absolute right final Pokemon, it gives you a huge opportunity to come back. And Amoongus in this matchup, we have a great time because we have Chiyu, we have Torkoal. Uh, in fact, this team is super anti Amoongus, right? Not only do you have Chiyu and Torkoal to hit that for super effective damage, but you also have Brute Bonded and Ogre Pond, which ignores Spore, and Chiyu and Pao, which threatens with Ice School Crash. So this is one of those games where it's like, fortunately, they had the wrong final Pokemon, which was kind of the right final Pokemon for us, but what a doozy. Oh my goodness. Okay, we've got a low in Ninetales, so some weather on the opposing side. Amoongus, Hands, Cresselia, Blood Moon, and Heatran. I played a practice game while using this team where my opponent led Iron Hands Heatran, and I really struggled. And I figure that I think the best solution into it is actually just a Flutter Chiyu lead. Uh, and the main reason for that is because you can Ghost Terra and like Shadow Ball slash Moonblast plus Dark Pulse just does so much burst damage. Yeah, so I definitely want these two. I think I want Ogre Pond and... Torkoal is the last one is interesting because I could set up Trick Room and use Torkoal under Trick Room. Yeah, I think I like Torkoal. It also helps out against Alolan Ninetales. Bonnet is interesting for Spore, but it doesn't do enough damage, which is part of the problem, whereas Torkoal applies a lot more pressure. And with this, I, I'm bringing as much anti-Heatran as possible. Which is funny to say, it's like, I, I'm bringing Ogre Pond and Torkoal, both which have ground-type attacks, and then I'm bringing Bonnet, or sorry, I'm bringing Chiyu and Flutter, which can just, like, Dark Pulse and Shadow Ball it. So, I think when I had previously played against Iron Hands and Heatran, I had led Brute Bonnet and the Flutter main, and that was really awkward for me, because I just felt compelled to Terra Bonnet immediately, and that didn't feel good. And the other upside of Torkoal is if they actually lead Alolan Ninetales, I can just deny Aurora Veil by switching in Torkoal. I would actually be surprised to see Aloha Ninetales here. I think Ninetales' biggest weakness is opposing weather, uh, because they can just set up weather as you try to Aurora Veil, and that sets you back significantly. So, if I were my opponent's shoes, I would not bring Ninetales. Yeah, and it's going to be Hands plus Ursaluna. Okay, makes sense.
Yeah, I mean, against this, I don't mind just going for Terra Chiyu to bypass Fake Out. Like, I would love to just Moonblast Ursa Luna here, Terra defensively, and Heat Wave. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, the only downside here is that Iron Hands can just go for something like a Wild Charge onto Chiyu, and like, Blood Moon could protect, but with me having Focus Ash on Flutter and Ghost Terra on Chiyu, this play I think feels relatively safe. And if they don't protect the Blood Moon and we just get the KO with this, that would be absolutely amazing. Because Blood Moon, in my opinion, is probably the biggest offensive threat. So Chiyu Fluttermane is a lead duo that has been used throughout a couple formats at this point. And Chiyu has actually kind of fallen off a cliff in terms of usage rates. They're going to Terra here, okay? Terra Water Hands is probably going to be their best option against us. And it is going to be Hands Terra, yep. Fire is also good. Okay. Good protect from Ursa Luna. Nice. Yeah, that was actually a really safe play by my opponent, but I'm honestly fine with this outcome. Uh, it does mean that they're going to get some additional like free damage to start, but it's fine. We'll get our Life Orb Heat Wave off. I almost wonder if I should consider setting up Trick Room. Missed the Iron Hands, though, which is a little unfortunate. They're going to go for Heavy Slam onto us. Yeah, that makes sense. I think if you're my opponent now, this next turn, you pivot Blood Moon out into Heatran. Yeah. Blood Moon into Heatran makes a ton of sense here. I'm wondering if there's any chance Shadow Ball plus Dark Pulse can KO. That miss actually did suck because it was free damage and I'm losing out on basically. But Fire Terra, very good Terra for them to have here. Hey, definitely didn't expect Vacuum Wave. That's cool. That is really cool, huh? Okay, we got Life Orb Dark Pulse off. Man, Vacuum Wave is actually a huge surprise there, honestly. And they Wild Charge us. We survive with the Sliver. Okay, this enables me to go out into Ogre Pond. You can Vacuum Wave into Chiyu now. I'm happy to go for Stomping Tantrum onto Hands and then pivot in Torkoal, I think. But maybe I just let them Vacuum Wave me, honestly. They might also get greed in and not click Vacuum Wave, so I'm down to Overheat. Because I am... In the off chance they actually let me get that off and we get a double knockout, that would be huge, right? That would be an Ogre Pond Torkoal endgame. A lot of surprises in this one, though. I mean, mainly the Vacuum Wave. Because um, I thought Flutter would get a guaranteed attack off there. And, like, this game would look really differently if they didn't have Vacuum Wave and, like, Heat Wave co had connected, right? Hands actually pivots out. Okay. Into Amoongus. Which makes me think, then, you should be clicking Vacuum Wave here onto us. But, no, they actually went for Protect. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I get Stomping Tantrum off. And overheat. I mean, we have Power Whip with Ogre Pond here. Black Sludge Among Us or Leftovers. Yeah. Hmm. So I can Power Whip into Ursa Luna right now. You're probably going to try to Vacuum Wave this slot. I'm down to Protect then. Which are you? Yeah, Ogre Pond's actually in a decent spot right now. Man, Vacuum Wave is such a cool tech move. It actually helps so much in this matchup because it gives them the priority they need to hit Fluttermane and GU, which is fascinating. Amoongus pivots out, okay. Back into hands? Yeah. I would expect Vacuum Wave now on a GU, right? You saw I had Overheat. Oh, wow, they don't. Nice play. The Power Whip just gets a one-hit knockout. Okay, I actually wasn't expecting the Yoko there. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. Wow. 
maybe Ogre Palm can pull off a comeback for us in this one after an unexpected early game. I'm actually really curious about that damage calc onto max HP Ursaluna Blood Moon. And Heatran indeed is in the back for my opponent. Yep. Okay, that's what we expected. The thing is, they haven't terra so I'm now wondering if you're Shuka Berry. But I'm also immune to Fake Out right now. Which is huge. Hmm... I honestly might want to just spiky shield and go for... Yeah, I want to spiky shield to conserve sturdy here. And I'm going to Dark Pulse into Heatran. Yeah, I mean, I think Ogre Pond's actually in a really good spot right now. Cool, they went for Fake Out, so our Sturdy is conserved there, nice. And the Life Orb Dark Pulse should put Heatran into KO range of a Stomping Tantrum, even with Shuka Berry, which is what I was going for here. So, it's going to be a close finish, but I actually feel pretty good, good about the position. The main thing was getting a Power Whip one-hit knockout onto Blood Moon. Citrus Berry? Okay. That's cool. And a heat wave, perfect. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Now we get Torkoal in for free. So this is an interesting position as well. Because um, it's like Heatran, I think protecting or switching out makes the most sense right now, right? You wouldn't let me just get a free Stomping Tantrum off into you. I do also have Ivy Cudgel here. We have Sturdy as well. I want to Ivy Cudgel. Like, part of me wants to make the read, like, Heatran pivots out. An eruption here. Because I think if I call it right, I just win the game. Maybe Heat Wave, because they could uh, Earth Power Torkoal here. Show me a switch. Or Protect. Either works. Okay, that works. I think that just wins us the game, because I just knock out the Iron Hands with the Ivy Cudgel here, uh, and then I just Stomping Tantrum the Heatran slot. In my eyes, if I were in my opponent's shoes, I think I would have pivoted Heatran out into a Moongus, um, hoping that Stomping Tantrum goes off into that slot and then use Iron Hands to deal damage. I don't know if that actually makes that much sense, though. Maybe Earth Powering there is just fine. Because it's like with Sturdy and with us ignoring Rage Powder, Ogre Pond is in such a good offensive position. Yeah, so I'm just going to click Stomping Tantrum now into Heatran. You have to go for a double protect, but then I'll just click Eruption, which one-shots a Moongus. If, yeah, if, if you get the double protect, that's still fine. We're immune to Rage Powder right now because we're Grass-type with Ogre Pond, so yeah, we should be good here, I think. Even if you get the double protect, I know you are with a Moongus... Not Focus Ash or Akaberry, so Eruption should get the one-hit KO. So even if you get the double protect with Heatran, and Amoongus is able to... I mean, actually, we just completely wall Amoongus here, so they can't do anything, you know? Ogre Pong carried this game so hard, wow. Getting a one-hit knockout onto Blood Moon, getting the KO onto the Iron Hands with Ivy Cudgel, and then Stomping Tantrum into Heatran, like, oh my goodness, this Pokemon felt incredible in this game, like, what a matchup for it. But, yeah, like I said, I am curious about that damage coke. And the Overpawn's quite strong here, but as you see, it's not max attack either. So it makes me wonder if it was like a damage roll in that position, but yeah. I'm just happy to Ivy Cudgel Eruption. Amoongus is never going to win a 1v2 from this spot. But we recovered from what I thought was a really tough situation for us. Um, turn 1 played out terribly, right? Like, they had a good defensive Terra... I missed Heat Wave, I didn't get any damage off, and I committed my Terra to deal all of that, and they had the Vacuum Wave surprise. But I think what was critical in this game was the fact that 
they played a little bit passively, right? Like, they could have vacuum waved my Chiyu, they could have switched Ursaluna out into Heatran, but Chiyu stuck around for a couple of extra turns than I would have expected to, and Ogre Pond was able to just absolutely demolish everything, because once they had committed their Terra, they actually have very few defensive options into it. So, yeah, Ogre Pond is really cool because it also doubles down as an Amoongus counter in the sense that Amoongus can't spore it, and we ignore Rage Powder. So, it felt so good in that game. So pulling up the damage calc, we are max attack Eevees, but we are Jolly Nature instead of Admin, and so with Jolly against Ursaluna, with max HP 0 defense investment, it is a 43.8% chance to get a one-hit knockout, so it's a damage roll, but it's slightly in my opponent's favor. And when you factor in accuracy as well, the odds of Power Whip connecting and getting a one-hit knockout are not incredible, but the fact that we can actually even get that one-hit knockout surprised me. I didn't think we even had a shot, to be honest. So Ogre Pond definitely carried us, and getting that knockout was so critical, because it just opened up the game afterwards and put my opponent in a really tough spot. Okay, we have a Scream Tail here with Flutter, Hisuian Arcanine, Champau, Tornadus, and Rillaboom. Normally, you have Urshifu, Water over Scream Tail. That's basically one of, if not the best team in the format right now. Which is funny because it was a team that existed back in Regulation D as well, but it won the last two major regional championships in this format. I would like to set up Trick Room in this game. Because I think Torkoal under Trick Room should demolish my opponent. So, to me, that probably means leading Fluttermane and Ogre Pawn. Torkoal in the back. And Brubotted as the fourth. I think you can make an argument for Chien Pao as well as Chiyu here. Chiyu in particular, I think, is offensively really strong, but not that great into Hisu and Arcanine in particular. But to me, I think Fire Torkoal Eruption just crushes everything here. And I don't think they have super good counterplay to Trick Room here, unless they bring out Screamtail, and the Screamtail has Trick Room. I'm mainly curious about the Screamtail side. I actually have no idea what to expect from that. It's been a while since Screamtail's been relevant, but a lot of people that do like using Screamtail use like plus speed booster energy, and you disrupt with Encore and Disable. It's gonna be Hisu and Arcanine and Flutter as their lead. Okay. Uh, this is interesting because you could theoretically Dazzling Gleam and Rock Slide. So instead of Trick Rooming, I could actually go on the offense here. Because I have Icy Wind. I do expect Gleam and Rock Slide here, honestly. So I'm actually thinking something like Moonblast and Stomping Tantrum and just KO Arcanine first. But do they ever expect Trick Room here? I'm gonna go Trick Room Stomping instead. Nice, that works. As long as I get Trick Room up, this is totally fine. And they're gonna bring out Rillaboom. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. Yeah, Moonblast Stompy would not have worked out well for me there. Yep, and they go for Gleam. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so the main thing is what I want to do this next turn. I pressure with Power Whip now onto their Flutter main. But I'm also kind of just waiting for the free switch in into my Torkoal, ideally. I could easily pivot Ogre Pawn out here, right, into Torkoal. I don't want to take unnecessary damage, is the thing. I could also bring in Bonnet. I just basically don't want either of these to take unnecessary damage, so... Yeah, like, we could Shadow Ball here, right? But we're max speed, so they'll outpace us. Very likely. I think what's awkward here, though, is... I mean, that Gleam doesn't, doesn't even feel like Choice Specs damage to me. But, yeah, I'll go for Power Whip and Shadow Ball into Flutter. I think the awkward thing here is if neither Pokemon gets knocked out this turn, but that is a shocking switch. Oh, okay. Back out into Hisuian Arcanine. In an ideal world, their Flutter doesn't protect, knocks out my Flutter, and I get a free switch in into Brute Bonnet or Torkoal. Nice, they don't protect. Power Whip still does so much damage there, my goodness. And they just Dazzling Gleam, okay. 
to which both Pokemon survive as well. So we actually get a knockout here, which I would not have expected. It's a little bit awkward right now because I really just want the free switch-ins into Torkoal and Bonnet. And I could have potentially switched out this last turn into Torkoal. Because my game plan was we set up Trick Room and then we just sweep with Torkoal ideally. So things are going a little bit off the rail right now. I bring Rillaboom back out. I think it's fine to give up both Pokemon here, personally, so I'm happy to just launch a Moonblast into... Actually, I'd rather chip at Arcanine. Shadow Ball here, and Stomping here. With the expectation that both Pokemon faint. Yeah, so they go for Extreme Speed. But I'll be able to bring out Torkoal and Brute Bonnet. And I pressure with Spore onto the Hisu and Arcanine slot, and just Eruption. So, a big question now is what is your final Pokemon, but also note that Bonnet here, of course, gets the defense boost from Protosynthesis, which is really nice. And we can fire Terra defensively against Hisu and Arcanine as well. So, I would expect Arcanine to switch, and with Rillaboom being out on the field right now, it means I should be able to get a Spore off into whatever is coming in. My other question is what Terra is your Rillaboom? Do you Terra here? Because it could U-turn into us. You could Terra defensively U-turn, but I think I'm going to Spore into Arcanine. Make that slot useless. The problem is if I commit my Terra here, I become weak to Rock Slide, but with the defense boost, I think I should Terra here, because U-turn uh, from Rillaboom is kind of a problem. Personally, I think Champau should be their final one. So I think Arcanine should switch out into Champau right now, and Rillaboom should Terra, and then U-turn out. You know what? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna do this. Terra, Bullet Seed, Eruption. Because I don't think the Hisu and Arcanine... Oh, it actually does stay in. Interesting. Okay, so maybe that's Assault Vested then. That is very interesting. Uh, I was making a read here, let Arcanine pivots out into Champau, and then we get a knockout onto Champau, and because you're Choice Banded, then we just knock you out on the last turn of Trick Room. But they're gonna Terra here. Presumably Rillaboom Terroring. Yeah. Into Ghost. Okay. I wonder if Fire Terra Eruption would have still KO'd then. Hmm, so they w went for Extreme Speed, which makes sense. Okay. But, I have Rocky Helmet, I get Eruption off, that's still so much damage. And I get Bullet Seed, which is also boosted by Grassy Terrain here. If we get 5 hits, we might actually get the Knockout. Uh, now I also have Sucker Punch onto your Rillaboom, which is kind of sweet. Four hits. Just fall short of the KO. Okay. And they go for Wood Hammer. Okay, that shouldn't KO. Yeah. Not the turn that I expected, but I think it makes sense, because I'm guessing my opponent's last Pokemon indeed is that Champau. If you Extreme Speed, I think you actually faint from Recoil here, which is kind of cool. And I have Sucker Punch, so I'm going to just Sucker Punch here, and... Earth Power. And if their last one is Champa, I don't think you beat Bonnet plus Torkoal even after Trick Room is over, so... Basically, that last turn I was making a read, I thought you Terra Rillaboom, you switch Hisu and Arcanine into your Champa with Focus Sash and hope to survive, and then, like, you turn out to pivot out. Well, I guess U-Turn wouldn't even work, because then you still have one more turn of Trick Room. Hmm. But the Rocky Helmet Bonnet is putting in so much work right now. Or, sorry, Rocky Helmet Torkoal is putting in so much work, because it's getting this additional chip damage off. Okay, perfect, the extreme speed to which we survive, excellent, you faint now. Maybe it was worth contemplating protecting there, but I like covering for Hisu and Arcanine switching out, and we have the surprise sucker punch here, which knocks out Rillaboom, so. It's a 2v1, but we have a defense boost on Brute Bonnet. Their last one can be Tornadus, Screamtail, or Champau, and I don't think any of those beat us. Especially with the defense boost and the fire terror on Bonnet. So, Trick Room expires basically just at the perfect time. I guess it would have been more perfect if I had like one or two more turns of Trick Room, but I don't think I actually need Trick Room from this point onwards. And that's Champau. Yeah, so I was reading into Champau switching in a little bit earlier, but that's totally okay. Now that Champau is out, you sh just should not have a great time against Bonnet, so I'm just going to Spore here. 
I can also just Rage Powder and Earth Power, but I think Spore Protect here is fine. Yeah. And they don't protect, which is good. Cool. And they just go for Throw Chop. Perfect. Yeah, I just like... Bonnet is so good into Champ in this endgame with the Fire Terra. And you, at best, can deal like... I would guess like maybe 40% per hit. But yeah, now I can just Bullet Seed into you. You haven't taken any Sleep Turns. I honestly think Bullet Seed and Earth Power might get the KO. I'm actually curious how much Eruption does. Single target in the sun. <laughs> like, it's weak. Of course, I could click Heat Wave or Earth Power in that position, but since Champa had to take a guarantee guaranteed turn of sleep, I was just curious to see how much it would do. Because it's still single target and sun boosted at the end of the day, and Champa's special defense is pretty low. But, yeah. I think that game was really interesting. We were able to successfully set up Trick Room, and I think the Focus Ash Trick Room Flutter main set does catch a lot of opponents off guard, and so it's really nice in enabling Brute Bonnet and Torkoal, and given how prevalent Tornadus is in the format right now, this team is super nice into a lot of those Tornadus teams, because those teams often fold once Trick Room gets set up. This game was a little bit awkward because my Bonnet and the Torkoal didn't get to come in early enough. I think I could have probably switched in Torkoal as soon as I set up Trick Room, but I was a little bit worried about it coming in and just taking too much damage. And I think the other really interesting turn this game was when the Arcanine stayed in and clicked Extreme Speed, and Rillaboom stayed in as well. But I figured most Arcanines on those teams are either Assault Vested, so you don't do that much damage even if you click Rock Side, or Choice Bandit, which means you're locked into Extreme Speed, and... If the Arcanine had switched out into the champ out there and I nailed that prediction and you indeed are Assault Vest or Choice Ban on Arcanine, then on the last turn of Trick Room, Arcanine comes back out and I just KO you. So that's kind of why I made the play I did that specific turn. But yeah, a lot of interesting things. You can see Ogre Palm pressuring so much in this game as well with that Stomping Tantrum into Hasuun Arcanine and the minus two Power Whip still did so much damage into Flutter Main. Okay, we've got Urshifu, Torn, Flutter, Rillaboom, Champa, Hisu, and Arcanine. So this is the same six that won the Toronto Regional Championships and uh, Regionals in Europe the weekend before that Toronto Regionals. I had featured this team on my channel. I called it, this is one of the best teams in the format right now. And this was before the World Championships, or no, sorry, right after the World Championships. Uh, and it's crazy to see how good the six are still in Regulation E, even after all these new Pokemon have been introduced to the format. So... Yeah, I think the main scary thing is the Flutter plus Hisu and Arcanine combo, but I still really like Ogre Pond plus Flutter and play Torch Trick Room with Torkoal and Bonnet, I think. Chiyu doesn't feel great in a matchup that has Hisu and Arcanine, and this time, you know, in the first game we played against uh, Screamtail and Team Preview, they have Urshifu here. Urshifu's not that scary with our comp. I think the main debate would be whether or not we'd want to bring out the Champao, but I'm down for the Flutter Ogre Pond combo again. I think leading Bonnet could be interesting as well, because it's immune to Prankster's uh, taunt from Tornadus. But, yeah, I think that the main thing is with Flutter and Ogre Pond, it's really difficult to deny Trick Room. And the Ogre Pond exerts offensive pressure. With Stomping Tantrum. The downside is we don't have Follow Me, though, I suppose. So I can't redirect attacks away. But, I don't know. If you go, like, Urshifu Torn, for example, I could Grass Terra. They're gonna go Torn Rillaboom. Okay. Uh, Ogre Pond's in a phenomenal spot right now, I would say. Maybe they just click Fake Out onto that slot. Hmm. Like, I'm honestly down for switching in Torkoal and Trick Rooming here. The downside to this is I lose to a Grassy Glide or Wood Hammer slash Bleak Wind Storm, or if they taunt into Flutter. But I also think this play just wins me the game if I get it off successfully, and I think Sash Flutter is not that common, so I'm willing to go for it. Even if they Bleak Wind, they could miss as well, right? So... You have to make the right play. I mean, Taunt would be the main thing I'm worried about here, but it feels fairly unlikely. Okay, Protosynthesis activates. Nice. Unless you're taunting us here, this is huge. Okay, nice taunt. Nice taunt. They did actually predict the Trick Room there. 
yeah. I don't mind that, though, honestly. Because it's like, I don't need Trick Room necessarily to thrive in this battle. Uh, because we have Icy Wind and a Speed Boost right now. So, I think I'm down to commit my Fire Terra here. Uh, it means I can't Terra Ogre Pawn. I don't think I'm going to Terra Flutter. Terraing Bonnet actually isn't a, like awful for us, though. So, yeah, I think I actually want a Heat Wave and just Icy Wind here. I don't want a Terra. Because I think Rillaboom going for a Terra makes sense. Torn actually goes for Rain Dance. Okay, that also makes sense. Really nice preemptive taunt there. That was super smart by my opponent, in my opinion. If you would hammer here, you still take a fair amount of damage. But now I think I'm a little bit worried about my matchup into the Urshifu in this endgame. Because I actually totally could have just stayed in with Ogre Pawn in this battle. Heat Wave doesn't miss though, which is great. But with the rain up, I don't do that much damage. Now you can Grassy Glide. You can Bleak Wind as well. Don't really want to switch either of these in though, so I think I let them just glide in Bleak Wind. And go for Heat Wave. Could have gone Grass Terra last turn, but I also don't think that's worth it. Okay, they go for Tailwind, which makes sense. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if I could have... Oh, wait, we do get the KO with Icy Wind. Oh, that's huge. I also could have clicked Eruption here instead. But I was expecting Bleak Wind and Grassy Glide. We do such little damage. That feels like a pretty bulky Tornadus then, though. Now it makes sense for you to bring out Urshifu. Uh, I think I might get swept by Urshifu. Oh, they bring out Arcanine, huh? Okay. Uh, you probably just Rock Slide Bleakwin right now. Rock Slide Bleakwin. Yeah, I have Sturdy on this. I don't know if that's actually that relevant. Feel like I should probably switch Torkoal out. Reset the weather. Just feels kind of bad to switch an Ogre Pond here. I think if I would replay this turn, I actually would have just sacrificed Torquil to get Ogre Pond in and then go for uh, Rock Terra Ogre Pond. I think that actually was a much better play. Yeah. I, I messed this turn up. I don't like how I played it. Because I think Rock Terra is so strong here. Instead of playing towards a Torquil Bonnet endgame. We do survive though, which is interesting. Okay. Yeah, so what is ultra interesting here is I have Sucker Punch on Brute Bonnet, which I don't think people generally anticipate. So what I can do is bring out the Bonnet right now. Get this defense boost. But yeah, I think it would have been better to just sacrifice um, Flutter Main, stay in with Torkoal, bring this out, and then go for Rock Terra. Because with Rock Terra, Rock Slide and the... Um, Bleak Wind just don't do very much damage, so I think I, yeah, missed that play. But that's okay. What do we think their last one is, is the other question. I think for now I'm happy to Spiky Shield. And Sucker Punch. You can't taunt the Bonnet, which is also good. Nice. Gets rid of Torn. Okay, good. Yeah, it was Rocky Helmet. Hmm. They just Rock Slide. Yep. I'm really annoyed at myself for missing the Ogre Palm play, though. That's kind of frustrating. And that should be Choice Band, Hisu, and Arcanine. Terrain disappears. What's your last one? Flutter Mane. 
<sighs> it's a booster set too. Special attack. Uh, I think I have to switch into Torkoal here. Terra, so I don't think from Moonblast. And go for Spore onto Arcanine. But I might just faint to Rockslide Moonblast anyway, honestly. Yeah, I think uh, I messed this game up by... Well, one, kudos to my opponent. Like, uh, having the Foresight to Taunt Flutter May, I actually think a lot of players would miss that. So, great, great analysis of recognizing, hey, they might have, um, they might have Trick Room on their team. I honestly think Moonblast plus Rock Slide just KO's Bonnet here anyway, so I might need a miss. But, I think this was my only shot at winning the game. Yeah, I just think if I had stayed in with Torkoal, brought in the Ogre Pond, and then Terra'd Ogre Pond, I would have had Stomping Tantrum Pressure. We wouldn't have taken that much damage from the... Yeah, I think Ogre Pond was the most important Pokemon to conserve in this one. But I guess I was worried about Water Urshifu in the back of their end. So they're going to go for Moonblast. Yep, Bond to Bond it. Oh, Rock Slide definitely KOs from that range. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a double KO. And I get crit, but I don't really think that matters too much. I think, like, <sighs> Rain Dance was a huge problem for me in this game as well. I, I would have been better off just staying with Ogre Pond, like, right from turn one of this battle, right? If I went, like, Spiky Shield, Icy Wind on turn one... But like I said, I don't regret the play because... Also, my controller just ran out of power, but... Um, I don't regret the play because I think if they had gone for something like Tailwind and I set up Trick Room successfully, I'm just in such a good spot afterwards. And so that's why I was kind of willing to uh, approach the battle that way. But yeah. Let me just plug my controller in real quick. So now we bring out the Ogre Pond. But huge kudos to my opponent for going for Taunt onto Flutter. Because... I think if I were to play this game differently, I actually wouldn't mind bringing the same Pokemon, and what I would do instead is turn 1, just go for, like, Spiky Shield, Icy Wind, and then just start going for damage immediately, right? I can Icy Wind again, and then go for something like an IV Cudgel onto the Tornadus, uh, and get a Knockout onto that slot. So, I think my opponent played this game really well, and I think I don't mind taking that risk on turn 1, because, yeah, if you don't have the foresight to go for Taunt, we're just in such an advantageous position with Torkoal and Brute Bonnet, and even with them going for Taunt, I think we still definitely could have won this game. Uh, the main thing was I needed to conserve Ogre Pond, and I switched it in, and it just took way too much damage, whereas if I had uh, just sacrifice Flutter, bring out Ogre Pond, then I can go for a Terra with it defensively, uh, and it puts on a lot of pressure uh, offensively still against my opponent's team as well. But... I think late game Flutter may still have been tricky to beat because basically we were getting outsped in this battle and they still had their Terra as well. But yeah, uh, well done by my opponent for sure. All right, we've got Dusclops, Torkoal, Amoongus, Iron Hands, Blood Moon, Ursaluna, and Tyranitar. Tyranitar is a scary Pokemon to fight against since we don't have Sacred Sword. I think there are a couple approaches we can take. The first is leading Brute Bonnet. And Fluttermane. And the idea behind that is if they lead Iron Hands plus Dusclops, you'll probably just fake out Brute Bonnet Trick Room, but my Flutter can just reverse your Trick Room. I think that's one option. The other is Fluttermane Chi Yu, double up onto the Dusclops turn one, Ghost Terror to get around Fake Out and just try to KO Dusclops. I kind of like the Flutter Bonnet approach here, honestly. And in the back, I really like Ogre Pond. Thinking Torkoal is our final one. Could also be Chimpao. But Torkoal helps if they set up Trick Room. Chimpao actually does do decent damage, but I don't know. In a Trick Room matchup, I feel like Torkoal is just more consistent. So, let's see. I think, basically, we can leverage the surprise of Trick Room Fluttermane here to catch our opponent off guard. So, if they go with the Iron Hands Dusclops lead, turn one, I'll just reverse their Trick Room and Spore. And they'll probably fake out into us, but if not, and they go for, like, Heavy Slam, that's great. Yep, exactly the lead we expected, so no surprise there. We get our defense boost on the Brute Bonnet. Okay. 
So yeah, here I'm happy to just go for Trick Room and Spore. But like I said, I think Flutter Chiyu is also another lead combo here because I can just Ghost Terra Chiyu and double up onto Dusclops. The thing is, Dusclops then could switch into, say, Tyranitar, and then you could just Heavy Slam Flutter, which would feel pretty bad because I would spend a whole Terra just to try to nuke something. And like, even if I Moonblast Dark Pulse into Dusclops, I'd have to cover for it Terraing or switching out into T-Tar, which doesn't feel great. They're gonna go for a Terra here, okay? Terra Iron Hands. Into fire. Makes sense. Cool. Yep, they go for fake out as expected. We flinch. Bingo! Nice. Cool. So that worked out as planned. Now the question is, who do I want to spore? Do I want to Shadow Ball Dusclops? I mean, Dusclops can't tear at this point, which is good. So I think I'm personally content to Shadow Ball and Spore that slot. Yeah, Sported and I Trick Room this turn and then we go from there. Oh, that's a lot of damage, wow. That's because it was a crit, that makes sense, okay. <laughs> and a special defense drop, jeez. Didn't really need any of that, but uh, I guess I'll take it. This Dust Clubs falls asleep. Yep, they Heavy Slam into us. Bring us down to Sash. Perfect. And now I'll be able to just Shadow Ball Dusclops and Spore Iron Hands. Dusclops looks so funny with this eye closed, by the way. <laughs> I find that comical. Yeah, Shadow Ball you, Spore into you. I guess the question is, can they even switch in anything? You could bring in Amoongus on the Spore potentially, but I don't care if they do that. That's fine. Cool. So we knock out Dusclops easily here. And yeah, getting the Terror out from them in the early game has been huge, and them committing Fire Terror was a really big deal here, because it means that you can't defensively tear anything else. So, this is an approach to beating Trick Room, right? Like, part of the thing is, if you look at my opponent's team, there's only one clear lead that you can do to set up Trick Room, which is Iron Hands Dust Clubs. There's actually another clear lead, which is Amoongus Dust Clubs, which is even more passive. And the thing about Amoongus Dust Clubs is Brute Bonnet just ignores the Rage Powder, which is really nice. However, one thing to actually be worried about if they let Amoongus plus Dust Clubs is like Pollen Puff immediately into Brute Bonnet, which would have been interesting. So that actually would have been a more challenging lead to go up against, I think. But they're going to bring out Amoongus here. Yep. Uh, With the Amoongus out, this is interesting. Because Bonnet's not really doing that much damage right now. You could Pollen Puff me. I don't really want a Terra, though, to be honest. I think I'm happy to just start getting damage off onto Iron Hands. Because if you KO the Flutter main, then it's a free switch into the uh, Ogre Pond, and then Ogre Pond can just go for a Ivy Cudgel onto the Iron Hands for a KO. Okay, good damage there. Flutters lights out with these special defense drops. But hopefully it doesn't end up being relevant. And they just spore into Flutter, okay. Spore is fine. It's just like a little bit awkward because I'm just waiting for a free switch in at this point. And now they can like sell side Pollen Puff, for example. So the question is whether or not I want to just like burn some turns of sleep right now. I guess I could also just like bring out Ogre Pond here. I... I yeah, I mean, you can't spore Ogre Pond, actually. So I think bringing out Ogre Pond here and then clicking Rage Powder is fine. We get Ogre Pond in safely this way. But, yeah, I may have been better off switching out Flutter Main into Ogre Pond last turn. So, here's Rage Powder. We'll see if they wake up. Cool. Hand stays asleep. I think with Hand staying asleep another turn, that should more or less win us the game. Uh, actually, not necessarily, because they do have Pollen Puff here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am happy to just go for Ivy Cudgel now into Iron Hands. Could be worth Fire Terraing, but if I Fire Terra, then you can Spore me, which I don't love. And I've got the Defense Boost right now. They should Pollen Puff this slot. I'm also thinking about switching Bonnet out into Flutter, honestly.
I also wonder if there's any chance we can KO with just Sucker Punch and Ivy Cudgel. Let's see. Okay. Get a little bit of chip damage. And a lot of damage from Ivy Cudgel. Super effective. Into Iron Hands. That's a KO! Woof! That was a critical hit, though. Okay. I feel like I probably don't get the knockout without the critical hit, but it was fine because, like, even if you wake up there... I mean, you should wake up there. Uh, what are you targeting, right? And I end up Pollen Puffing into... Yeah, the Ogre Pond. So maybe a Drain Punch double up there could have helped out them, but then I can just put you back to sleep with Brute Bonnet. And they just bring out Ursa Luna. Perfect. Uh, with Ursa Luna, I'm happy to just Power Whip you and Bullet Seed you. And we don't want to Terra either of these because it gives up our Grass Typing, which would not be ideal here. So definitely had some good fortune in this game uh, between the... What, we got a crit and special defense drop on Dusclops. I don't think either of those were relevant, though, because I think two Shadow Balls were going to KO Dusclops anyway, and that's all I really needed. Um, but then the crit onto Iron Hands here, I think, likely mattered, since Iron Hands is a pretty tanky Pokemon. But the main thing was we were able to just, like, bait out this Terra early, and yeah, they go for Rage Powder, but with us not committing Terra, we actually just ignore Rage Powder here. So Power Whip is just going to connect onto Ursa Luna, and it does not get the one-hit knockout, but that's fine. It's actually a Berry Ursa Luna. Oh, wow. That is not very common. I feel like it's almost always something like Life Orb, Silk Scarf, Weakness Policy, Choice Specs. But Bullet Seed here, of course, is super effective as well. So that just delivers the finishing blow. The best play they could have made in that spot was Protect Ursa Luna and try to get a Pollen Puff critical hit onto the Ogre Pond. But without that, not much they can do. Cool. So we'll just go for Ivy Cudgel here and Sucker Punch. And we have Torkoal in the back as well, which never came out. I do think the critical turn was probably uh, when we got the knockout onto the Iron Hands. I maybe should have gone for Rage Powder just to cover for Iron Hands getting a critical hit onto the Ogre Pond slot. Because it's like, I think two Ivy Cudgels knocks out anyway. So I was just curious if Sucker Punch and uh, the Ivy Cudgel will get the KO. But I, I do want to pull up the damage guard and do that, Calc. So let's learn. So the answer to this question is kind of based on the EV spread that Iron Hands has, and Iron Hands can run a lot of different EV spreads. For example, some players with the Assault Vest run very heavy investment into attack and special defense, and don't have as much HP investment. So again, something like 76 HP, 4 defense Iron Hands, or say something like 44 HP EVs, then uh, the Sucker Punch plus Ivy Cudgel can actually get a knockout, but it's still a damage roll, right? As you can see, Ivy Cudgel on the lower end just doesn't do that much damage, and Sucker Punch was definitely not doing like 25% there, right? And if you're like max HP on Iron Hands, for example, then you should survive the Sucker Punch and Ivy Cudgel combination. So it's good to know. I was curious as to whether or not the double up could get a knockout. What it feels like after looking at this calc is the answer is yes, it can, but you shouldn't expect it to knock out. And I would actually expect hands to hang on with like 5 to 10%, maybe a good amount of the time. So given that, then I think it would have been smarter for me to just go for a Rage Powder with the uh, Brute Bonnet. So that it takes away a chance of a critical hit from Iron Hands onto us. If this double up was a guaranteed knockout, then I think it's totally worth going for. But given that it's clearly a damage roll at best, it's probably better to play safer there because yeah, you could get a Drain Punch off, but I'm still doing so much damage with Ivy Cudgel and it's still a two hit knockout onto the Iron Hand slot, even after recovery. So if I could replay that turn, I think it'd be safer to just go for Rage Powder. Okay, we've got Azumarill, Clefairy, Iron Hands, Volcarona, Rillaboom, and Landorus for this one. Cool team. Um, I feel like Flutter Chiyu just feels good here, no? Their team is so setup oriented, but Flutter Chiyu just does so much damage. I also think Haze is actually really interesting on Champau here because their team is really setup oriented. So it's actually compelling. That'd be kind of mean to bring Shampoo just to Haze. Because <laughs> the reality is it's not that good offensively. I don't think I actually want to bring it. What do I lead with, though? I think if I'm my opponent, I would lean into maybe Clefairy? Do I even bring Brute Bonnet? Maybe I dropped Torkoal? I also think Flutter Bonnet lead is interesting. G 
to you. And Ogre Pond in the back. If you look at my opponent's team, there's two clear Pokemon that I want to set up, and two clear Pokemon, or three Pokemon that enable it. So, a Fake Out user, Iron Hands, or Rillaboom, plus uh, Volcarona slash Azumarill. Uh, there's also a uh, Clefairy, so Clefairy, Azumarill, Clefairy, Volcarona can work. Those are all viable leads. Yep. There's one of them. Okay. Uh... Don't I see win here? I'm actually really curious if Volcarone has a bug type attack, because if so, I feel compelled to Terra Bonnet. it. But I think tearing Ogre Pollen would be pretty cool here. Could also just switch into Chi Yu, I see win. Hmm. Okay. I think turn one, I'm happy to just Icy Wind Spore Clefairy. Oh, wow. No Terras, no Protects, no Switches. What is... That means Clefairy is probably clicking Sing here, no? Volk is really slow. Wow, even just with a single Icy Wind, we outpace it. Okay. <coughs> so probably has no speed investment. Yeah, and they quiver dance, but that's fine. As long as I can keep dropping your speed with Icy Wind, I don't mind too much. I think I'm mainly worried about Clefairy now waking up and getting a Sing off. Because I think that's what it's going to try to go for. I don't know the Terra on Volcarona either is the thing. But I'm happy to just click Icy Wind here and then switch out into Ogre Pond. Uh, I think my Flutter Chiyu lead would have worked, but my guess is if they're willing to lead this, you are Water Terra Volcarona. Because otherwise, I think this lead is really weak into Flutter Chi. Yeah, Volk protects, which is fine. Now it's a question of does Clefairy get a one turn wake up and then um, get a Sing off? Because that would be a little annoying. Sing would be really bad, honestly. It wakes up! Okay. It does, it does go for same, but it misses. Oh, that's so scary, though, because that's basically a coin flip. But the odds were very much in our favor that turn. Uh, I'd really like to knock out Clefairy here. You're at neutral speed right now. But you should be pretty slow, right? Given that Bonnet outsped you when you were at minus one. I just, I would love to knock out Clefairy here, because the threat of Sing is actually really scary. But I think I can also look towards doubling up on Volk. Nah, I, I really want to knock out Clefairy here. Okay, they commit a Terra, which makes sense, so... Water Terra was my prediction here. Let's see. Could be Dragon Terra, actually, as well. Yep. Right when I said that. Ah, Moonblast Ivy Cudgel into Volk would have been sick, then. Uh, let's see if what Clefairy went for. Okay, they didn't follow me or really do anything, so we'll get a KO there. And I'll, I'll gladly take that. Like, I want to eliminate Clefairy ASAP here because the variance of Sing is way too stressful to deal with. And we were lucky that they didn't connect last turn. And they just Quiver Dance again. Okay. That's fine. You committed your Terra to do that. We could even honestly look towards Terra Rock. Ogre Pond here, but if they have Giga Drain on Volcarone, that's a little scary. They bring out Landorus. Okay. Landorus is fine. I mean, I can just Icy Wind right now. You're probably Scarf, though, if I had to guess. I think a U-turn from there and makes sense here as well into Ogre Pond. You know what? I actually don't hate Spiky Shield and Icy Wind here. I think Icy Wind is just a good move, and I don't want to switch into either of the Pokemon in the back right now. 
Oh, okay, they're gonna go for Rock Slide. Well, now I have to worry about flinches. Okay, huge to not flinch you there. That's absolutely huge, because we almost just knock out Landorus, but more critically, you get a speed drop onto both. And they Heat Wave, perfect. Okay, that works for me. I assume this KOs us. Yeah. But this opens the door now for Chiyu to come out. So we've seen Heat Wave Giga Dream protect, or sorry, Heat Wave Quiver Dance protect, which is all pretty standard. Oh, I could actually bring a Bonnet. And just Sucker Punch Lando. Uh, they could have Rillaboom as their last one. Let's think about what their last one could be. Rillaboom, Iron Hands. Maybe I do want to go into Chiyu then. I think my only hesitancy with Chiyu is that I could miss my attacks. So I might want to commit to Dark Pulsing. But given the speed drop onto Landorus, Azumarill, Iron Hands, and Rillaboom. Like, I think Heat Wave Power Whip here is okay. Maybe I should show more respect to Volcarona, though, honestly. Okay, they don't make the switch, which I was kind of hoping to see. But we get a knockout onto Landorus. Chi will get Heat Wave, single target. But with the special defense drops, not much damage. And they're going to click Heat Wave. Chi dodges it. Connects on Ogre Pong, brings us down to Sash, or Sturdy, I should say. Yeah, maybe I just don't have Volk answers right now. Like, it was a free Ivy Cudgel into Volk last turn. Iron Hands is their last one. Uh, I think they're going to Quiver Dance here. That's what I would do. I'm going to Dark Pulse into Volcarona here. Switch out into Brute Bonnet. I'm actually not a big fan of how I played this game. I think Dragon Terra Volk was something that I could have anticipated, and it would have been nice to get Moonblast off. Dragon Terra makes a lot of sense, yeah. Like, because otherwise Flutter Chiyu kind of runs it over. But it's quite good here. And I also missed the sing, or my opponent missed the sing. If I had hit, I also probably just have lost the game right there. So, yeah, not a big fan of how I approached it. Fake out into Chiyu. Quiver Dance, yeah. Okay. I think my way of winning this is to go for uh, Fire Terra with Bonnet and Spore Volcarona. I'm going to overheat into this Fire Terra Spore. And then I use Ivy Cudgel plus a uh, Bullet... Sorry, Ivy Cudgel, Sucker Punch, and combo to KO Volk quickly. Sweet Terra here. It's a good let they're not Grass Terra. I guess if they were Grass Terra, though, I would have been able to just deal way more damage with most of my Pokemon. And I was also, yeah, thinking Landers may have wanted to switch out there, and I didn't know what their last one was, which is why I ended up Power Whipping that turn, but they're just going to Heat Wave here, which is fine. Nice, we actually survived with Chiyu, which is incredible. Which means I get Overheat off into Iron Hands, which is so much damage. That Heat Wave, by the way, did just enough damage so that I faint from Life Orb. If we had just a little bit more HP there, we would have survived, but that's okay. Most importantly, we get the Spore off into Volcarona. They're going to Wild Charge, which we should survive. Yeah. That was close, though. Cool. This is going to be a really close end game. If Volcarona stays asleep for two turns, I think we win. Because I think two Ivy Cudgel should just get the knockout.
Uh, my other fear here is Bullet Seed don't, only gets two hits into Iron Hands. Maybe I want a Spore here instead. I, I'm mainly curious how much Ivy Cudgel does into Volcarona. I have a guaranteed Stomping Tantrum Sucker Punch here. But I want the guaranteed Ivy Cudgel right now into Volk, I think. Yeah, I'm actually going to Ivy Cudgel and Spore, I think. Just because I think Bullet Seed re reaching two hits here would be a disaster for me. So there's one turn to sleep from Volk. We get Ivy Cudgel off. Is that in Sucker Punch KO range? Oh, it's really close. It's really close. If I went Sucker Punch this turn, it might have been. I think it survives, though, just after that Leftovers recovery. Ah. Okay, I mean, I'm going to Stomp in here. If they stay asleep this turn, we win. And if Sucker Punch KOs, we also win. So, two different things that could go well in our favor. Let's see. They theoretically could get around Sucker Punch by Quiver Dancing here. And I also, if I knocked out Iron Hands with Bullet Seed last turn, I wouldn't have to commit. Well, it, it doesn't really matter because it would come down to whether or not they wake up anyway, I think. Because they're faster than me right now. Nice. Sucker Punch just gets the KO. Okay, sweet. That's exactly why I played this endgame the way I did, where it's like, I want to make sure I don't give Iron Hands the chance to knock out the Ogre Pond this turn. I get my guaranteed sleep, and Stomping finishes it off. So, that was a really intense battle, but Sturdy from Ogre Pond was huge for us in this one. And then, uh... Bonnet with that Fire Terra, which we conserved all the way to the end, was also quite important. So it was looking a little bit tough because once I was down to 1 HP on Ogre Pond, things look kind of challenging. But I think uh, Chi Yu being able to get that Overheat off into Iron Hands was huge because it then put it in KO range of my Ogre Pond. And Bonnet being able to Fire Terra, survive an attack, and then Spore into Volcarona was absolutely huge as well. But this is why Bonnet is a, uh, potentially more stronger in positions like this over Amoongus, because Amoongus just wouldn't be able to deal significant damage, right? But having Sucker Punch actually be able to finish off Volcarona before it can move was so nice to have in this spot. So yeah, really fun performance by Bonnet and Ogre Pond. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much as always for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed this team. I think it has so many fun tricks up its sleeve, whether it be the Rock Ogre Pond, the Plus Defense Brute Bonnet with Sucker Punch, or the Trick Room Icy Wind Flutter Main. Really fun to feature this one in particular because I think it just has a lot of unique tricks in best of one. And so, yeah, thanks so much as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy, and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.